I've, um, I've seen a lot of parents spend lots and lots of money on, on special programs, uh, things like word families and, and that sort of thing. What sort of advice would you give parents about looking into specific programs that can help? There are lots of very good programs around for teaching children to read, that is true. Most of them cost money because you have to pay the person who's doing the program because it takes time. However, you need to uh, be wise that if you can do the screening uh, on your child and find out what area is most likely to help them first. Will it be the visual? Will it be the auditory? What will it be that will help them most? And start on that area and then give it a go for say three months at least and evaluate. Are we getting the help that we thought we were going to get? Uh, I saw a child who was 14. Uh, they had spent $5,000 on a long-term uh, highly um, effective program for teaching word families and sounds in words and yet their reading was still at a second to fourth grade reading level, 14 years of age. What was the problem? They had a visual perceptual difficulty that had never been uh, realised, never been treated, so they couldn't make use of all that very good expensive teaching that they'd had. We needed an evaluation that said after three months, how much progress have we made? Do we need to investigate something else? That's one way to go. The important thing is not to do everything at once. Because if you think, well, I'll cover every area and then my child will be right, you put a great burden on the child. And also, if you get progress, you don't know what is giving you the progress out of all that you've been doing. So it's important to do one thing at a time, evaluate after a reasonable period of time, start something else only then if you're not getting satisfactory progress. Okay, great. Paul, what can a school do to assist? I've heard of uh, different colour paper and uh, different coloured workbooks that can help. Yes, of course. By changing the background colour of the paper, we can get an additional effect. With very young children, for example, who might be too young to have uh, Erlen lenses put on them uh, because it's hard to decide which is the best tint for them, uh, just changing the colour of the paper can make it easier for them to learn their handwriting and to do their spelling and so on. The trouble is you can't change the background colour in the books. It's nearly always white. And uh, so that's why then we could use a plastic sheet over the top of different colours that would suit whatever suits the child. Um, that helps, but we can't get as many colours in the plastic sheets as we can get with the tints uh, in the glasses. And so uh, we, we would like to move to glasses as soon as possible, uh, as soon as the child's able to understand the process that is needed to get to the right tint. Okay, now I've known a, I've known a lot of parents that have had trouble convincing their school that this is something important that they should, they should work with. Are there some schools that are more accepting of these conditions than others? Uh, yes, there are, and teachers and others can be trained as screeners uh, so that they are able to screen children in their school and it would be so sensible if there's a number of children in the school who are not doing well to screen all those children who are not doing well to see whether they can be helped by coloured overlays on the page, coloured paper or coloured lenses and we know schools where this has been done and they have ended up with 100% result in reading. That is to say every child progressing in reading rather than your typical 10% struggling, struggling all the way through school and not really being successful. Okay, fantastic. Paul, thank you very much for your time today. If you're looking for more information on this or any other literacy condition, please visit our website at readhelp.com.au. Thanks for your time. <laughs>